this was an interesting exercise in my case. Uh, I never really looked at it, so I went back in the herd book, and we have a small herd, uh, 65 cows and 75 heifers right now. And I actually had 50 uh, animals that were preg checked, and I counted up, uh, we had 22 of those uh, pregnant to genomic bulls and 28 of those pregnant to uh, proven bulls. That's 44% genomic, 56% uh, of uh, proven bulls. And also the interesting thing was, uh, might have been a little bit higher than what I expected, but uh, we have a number of red and red carrier animals, and I've tended to use more uh, genomic bulls uh, in my red uh, genetics, uh, thinking we'd make a little more progress that way. So that probably slanted a little bit, a bit higher than what I would have thought. Um, at this time, uh, when we go to select the genomic bulls, uh, of course I look at the top of the list of uh, the higher genomic bulls, but then I screen uh, for three things that are really important to me. Number one is the sire stack, uh, bulls that I think will work good on one on top of the other in the pedigree, uh, the cow families from which those bulls are from, and then the other criteria that I've looked more at in the last year, I, I do look really carefully at the DPR. Uh, I think that's a component that is, to me, uh, when you talk to commercial dairymen, the ones we're actually breeding bulls for, really important to them, and that's one thing that I'm looking at closer now. As far as um, uh, any type of advice uh, to breeders or commercial uh, uh, producers, uh, I think that uh, the biggest thing is to use a wide variation of those uh, genetic pools. Um, when uh, you, know, you, you look at the averages, and of course uh, most of uh, the information will show you it is really close to the prediction, but there's, there is a bell-shaped curve within that. And uh, you can't put all your eggs in one basket, in my opinion. And uh, so consequently, of those 22 pregnancies uh, to genomic bulls uh, in my small herd, there are seven different bulls uh, involved. And so um, uh, as a breeder, it's not the way I used to breed cows. I used to use, concentrate more on certain bulls. And that's one thing that's going to change. I'm going to have to branch out, I feel, uh, to spread my risk, basically and use uh, a larger number of bulls when I'm using genomic bulls. Sure. Thank you. Julian, uh, maybe you can comment on the percentage of contract meetings that are to genomic uh, tested sires, et cetera. So our plan early in uh, 2009 was to, uh, well, we didn't really know where we were going with this as well. Let's try for 15% of our meetings being done to young sires. And uh, the first six months, we were struggling to get to 12%. Uh, I guess we put a little more emphasis on it. And by the end of 2009, I think our average well, our numbers are 20% of our meetings uh, are done to young sires. Um, how we select them, that's, uh, well, it's, we, we first select the proven bulls we want to use. Uh, then we have an idea of the cow population we're going to be, the cow and heifer population we're going to be using them on. And then uh, we go through the, the young sire list and we pick the ones that will first complete uh, or will be different than our proven lineup as a matter of bloodlines or traits were, that are not very well represented or not very strong in the proven bull population. And uh, I mean, go from, from the top list and um, go for different traits and, and complete. So we uh, have a complete uh, breeding program now. And as a matter of advice, uh, Jason said it very, very well, use variation of bulls. And as individual breeders, let's say, if you want to use young sires, say, uh, Go on the list and pick uh, bulls that are from bloodlines that you're comfortable with, you know, that you like. Uh, pick cow families you like and then go for the traits. Not just look for the top list and go by TPI. I mean, look at the individual traits of these animals and select for what you like to, to use in your herd, what you want to improve in your herd. Just not because the bull is number one on the TPI list is one you need to use, you know. Uh, TPI is a formula, but yet use, look at the individual traits of these bulls and see uh, what you can do for you in your herd. What fraction of your bull dams have been genomically tested, and have you thrown contract meetings out based on bull dam genomic PPAs? Uh, at this point, uh, especially in Canada, um, the farmers have been very receptive to testing females. Uh, so pretty much, uh, well, I would say we're 100%, but close to 100% of the females we're using in Canada have been genotyped. Uh, and it's been, the farmers have been doing it on their own, so we don't, didn't have control who was getting tested, who wasn't. Uh, and like the official uh, T, uh, LPI list in Canada is 
only genomic tested animals. There's no list uh, that is separated uh, that are animals that have, have, been, have not been tested. Um, although we have, we have tested young bulls from them that, uh, well, we had bull contracts on cows that were not genotyped, and in the meantime, cows got genotyped and their index suddenly dropped. And uh, we ended up testing some of those anyway, and uh, sometimes you're surprised. We had cows that were, were still at a decent level. I'm not saying they dropped out of fish and herd, but they still, uh, they're surprised, you know, uh, cows that were in the 3,000 LPI dropped with their genomic evaluation in the 2,000, but still were able to produce an offspring that were in the 25, 2600. Uh, but yet those that you see that drop below like a 2,000 mark or that are in the 1500s, they, they can, they have to work really hard to get back in the, in the high risk. 